Hey, hope you're having a good day as we jump into Exodus chapter 19. And uh, this is one of my favorite sections of the book of Exodus because the Israelites are coming to Mount Sinai and I love the history and the, even the archaeology and stuff behind this of, you know, where is Mount Sinai at, you know, what was happening in this area. And then this is when God really makes the covenant with the people. Because what you have going back in the book of Genesis is you have God's covenant with Abraham. And now God's going to come in and make a covenant with the entire nation of Israel now that number in the millions, they're going to be the, the, the people that come under the covenant defined by the Ten Commandments and the law of Moses. You know, when you talk about, you know, um, numbers and Leviticus and uh, the, the law that's laid out. So let's look at just the first two verses today. It says, exactly two months after the Israelites left Egypt, they arrived in the wilderness of Sinai. After breaking camp at Rephidim, they came to the wilderness of Sinai and set up camp there at the base of Mount Sinai. So they have finally arrived in Sinai. Because remember, this is an important thing to remember. The original plan was they were going to go to Mount Sinai. And then, because this goes back to Exodus chapter 3, because God told Moses to at the burning bush, because the burning bush happened on Mount Sinai. He told them, he told him, bring them back. When you leave, you're going to bring them back here. So from here, then they were supposed to go up and go straight into the promised land. That didn't happen because of rebellion. You know, you come to church on Sunday morning. We're talking about the book of Joshua right now, and uh, we'll deal with that in this in that sermon series, specifically when we talk about Caleb. Uh, but when you look at this, that was the plan. Now, they don't fulfill the plan except because of their rebellion. But the Israelites stayed in this wilderness for an extended period of time. They stayed here at Mount Sinai, and they camped there around the mountain, right? They camped around it. And Sinai, as I said, was the place where Moses met God at the burning bush. And the whole nation of Israel is going to experience what Moses experienced the burning bush. They're going to see a physical presence of God as far as the cloud descending upon the top of the mountain. They are going to hear the voice of God here at Mount Sinai. Now, when I think about where Mount Sinai is located, that's really important. Because we think about the Sinai Peninsula, right? Because what that is is the Red Sea comes up and it splits into two gulfs, right? And the Sinai Peninsula is the land in the middle. But that's not where Mount Sinai is. That's where the, I uh, guess the old historical Mount Sinai was that people said this is the place. No, it is not. It is actually on the other side of the Gulf of Aquaba. See, that's where Midian was. And we know from Exodus chapter 2 and 3 and 4 and 5, we know that Mount Sinai was actually in the land of Midian. And it is a part of the Arabian Peninsula. It is in the western part of the Arabian Peninsula. So it can't be in the Sinai Peninsula. It is on the Arabian Peninsula because that's where Moses was. And so that helps us with where the Red Sea crossing was. That helps us with where Mount Sinai really is. And so the ancient land of Midian was in Saudi Arabia. And if Moses was in Midian and he went to Mount Sinai in the land of Midian when he was tending Jethro's sheep, he wouldn't have been over on the other side in the Sinai Peninsula. That's not where he would have been. He was in the land of Midian. So that's where it was. So there is a lot of evidence, both historical and archaeological, to associate an Arabian mountain called Jabal al as the site of the original and real Mount Sinai. So, a little history, a little archaeology for you, but the most important thing, they're in God's presence. See you later.